Welcome to Food You. We're your host. I'm Christina. And I'm Gabe. We're here again at the Union County Agricultural Center Demonstration Kitchen and we're very grateful to the staff here for letting us use this facility. You might notice that Christina is wearing a green shirt and I'm holding something green <laughs> and that's because St. Patrick's Day is upon us. Yes. And our recipes today will revolve around uh, Irish traditional food and some not so traditional. It is. So we were thinking about what to make today and it feels like everybody makes corned beef for St. Patrick's mm -hmm. Day. Every restaurant you go to has some variation of corned beef and we thought we would venture out and try something a little different. Mm -hmm. So today we're making an Irish coddle and a coddle is a stew. And do you know where the word coddle comes from? Uh, when I hear the word coddle I think of like taking care of something and nurturing something and holding it <laughs> softly. Like a baby? Like a baby. <laughs> okay. That's one word. Um, I did a little research on the internet and I found that coddle in the stew sense means a really slow simmer. So it's something you can leave on the pot, you can let it coddle all night long. Mm. And the theory is that it gained popularity because the men in Ireland would go drinking at the pub at night mm. and the woman could leave it on the stove coddling until they came home in the wee hours. Gotcha. What's, uh, what's in the coddle there? So we're going to start by sauteing some onions and I'm gonna get this going. And then it has potatoes, sausage, and thick cut bacon. So let me get this burner going. We're gonna add about two tablespoons of olive oil to this pan over medium high heat. Here we go. And I'm slicing potatoes about a quarter inch thick here. Yep, and before we did this, I went ahead and cooked nine pieces of thick cut bacon and also a pack of pork sausage that I cut into pieces. And there's about five or six pieces of sausage in a pack and you just wanna cook that whole pack up. And then the third thing we're gonna cook are two onions. We're just gonna add them in here. And we're gonna keep these moving around until they're nice and brown and tender. Let's see. Get my spatula. Would you like me to slice all these potatoes up? Yes, please. We're gonna use six potatoes. We were thinking about what we would make today and like Christina said before, corned beef and cabbage seems to be the, the stereotypical St. Patrick's Day meal. But we wanted to to venture a little bit away from that. Uh, still do something traditional, but, but not the corned beef and cabbage. We thought about some uh, seafood, since um, Ireland is in the middle of the sea and, and they <laughs> eat a lot of seafood too, but this was something that we thought uh, you could find good ingredients for around here and something that would be comforting to, to most people. It's kind of like, it's kind of like chili or beef stew or something. Yeah, everybody's mama has their recipe for this in Ireland, and everybody's mama makes it the best. Yeah. How are those potatoes coming? These potatoes are coming along well. Um, I'm just noticing the texture of the common white potato, and I'm reminded that the French word for potato is palm de terre, which actually means earth apple. <laughs> so there you go. It kind of feels and looks like an apple. That's very interesting. These onions are cooking up. We want to wait until they're just like golden brown. Almost there. While these onions are finishing, after you wash your hands, would you mind chopping up this parsley into little bits? Mm -hmm. And I've actually got a little cutting board right there if you want to use it. We're going to leave the onions on the bottom of this pan and then we're going to layer it with the potatoes and the bacon and the sausage and then parsley, salt, and pepper. It's a little bit different than beef stew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but just a comfort food. Mm-hmm. That's what I meant. Almost there. There are different kinds of parsley. This is your regular curled leaf that you see most often. There's also a flat leaf, parsley, Italian parsley. Um, and it'll give a little bit of color to this dish because everything, it's like meat and potatoes and onions, it's kind of bland in its color, so that'll brighten it up a little bit. Yep, yep. And then you can't have a whole meal without some kind of green vegetable. So in efforts to do that, we're gonna make sauteed cabbage a little bit later on. Mm -hmm. 
So we had our menu all planned out for today, and uh, I asked a person on, on Wingate's campus, who is our men's head soccer coach, who is also from Northern Ireland, what he thought about what we were preparing for today, and he said that, um, he said, you can never go wrong with an Irish stew with lamb and not beef. So that, that's another good suggestion, something you could try at home. Um, something that would probably go really well in cooked in a pot like that. Yeah, if you don't like bacon or sausage, you could definitely use lamb chops or beef stew, beef. You could change it up and fix it to meet your needs and your taste. Yep. Same thing. All right, these are nice and tender. So I'm going to turn the heat down to medium low. And I'm going to go ahead and add our bacon to the top. And this is bacon that's been cooked again. I cut the strips into little chunks before I fried it in the pan. And that was just to help it cook faster and to make it into bite-sized pieces for the coddle. And it's already drained. Is that good? Mm -hmm. I like thick cut bacon. I do too. It gives you something a little more to bite into. Mm -hmm. It's like ham, but better. Exactly. It reminded me a lot of Canadian bacon, like the thick ham when I was cooking it. You throw that away for me, please. And then on top of this, I'm going to add a layer of potatoes. <laughs> Thank you. And we're just going to layer them single, single layer all the way around the pot. That's enough for this. Thanks. And then on top of that, we're going to add some salt and some pepper and a little bit of parsley. And we've cut up about a half a cup of this parsley here. And then on top of that, we're going to add the sausages. And these, once again, have been cooked in the pan according to the directions on the package. And you can find these, sometimes they're with like the ham and the chicken at the grocery store. And then sometimes you find them over with the deli meats and the bacon. Thank you. And then we're going to layer one more layer of potato. Thank you. I'm going to finish putting these on here. And will you measure me out two cups of chicken stock, please? Put a little more salt and pepper on the top. And you pour it in? In one second. Yep. No? Not yet. <laughs> there you go. And we're going to finish off the rest of the parsley. Is it on high heat? It's on medium low. It's talking. I know, it's still hot. Then we're going to add two cups of broth. That's one. Just anywhere? Yep. Just pour it over it. I'm gonna do this so it doesn't knock on that parsley. Okay. Yep. One more cup. Yep. There we go, now it's quiet. Mm -hmm. So this is on low and we're gonna let it come up to a boil and once it starts simmering, we're gonna cover it. And while we're waiting for it to come up to a boil, we're gonna take a short break and be right back.
extraordinary future begins at Wingate University with more than 35 undergraduate majors and graduate and professional programs in the health sciences, business, and education. Wingate University's enrollment has mushroomed and construction has skyrocketed in the past two decades. And Wingate is the sixth best value in the South, according to U.S. News & World Report. Most importantly, Wingate graduates get jobs that are working all over the Carolinas and the U.S. Major in a great life at Wingate University. Welcome back to Food You. Again, we're here at the Union County Agricultural Center Demonstration Kitchen, and we're very grateful to, to be using this space. Our menu today is um, playing off of St. Patrick's Day and Irish traditional Irish food. Um, we've got some our coddle here, coddling. It is, and it's come up to a boil now, so we're going to keep it on extra low, as low as it'll go, let it simmer and we're gonna cover this up and it's actually gonna simmer for about 40 minutes until the potatoes are nice and tender. Mm -hmm. And while our coddle is coddling, mm -hmm. we're gonna get started on some dessert. Okay. Do you like dessert? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So today we're gonna to be making an Irish cream mousse and it's going to have caramel Baileys in it. Caramel. Car caramel. Three syllables. Caramel. Okay, so I've put this mixing bowl in the fridge for about 30 minutes and let it get nice and cool and we're gonna make some whipping cream. And what I have here is just plain heavy cream. Some of them say whipping cream at the store and some say heavy cream, either one is fine. What's the difference? You know, I honestly don't know. And they've both worked fine for me for whipping cream. Okay. So, yep. So I have two cups of that in there and we're gonna go ahead and turn it on high <laughs> and let it mix up, okay? Okay. It'll just take us a couple minutes. Whoop. Are you going to put sugar in it? I'm actually not. So what we're going to add to this is a mixture that I've already made. And this is three egg yolks mixed with a half a cup of sugar and a half a cup of cocoa powder. The milk is popping out. Is that supposed to be doing that? It's splattering a little bit, but it's okay. You have to do it on high. So when you're making this mixture, um, you take the three egg yolks and you whip it together with the sugar and you want to be sure to cook that in a double boiler for about five minutes just to kill any bacteria because sometimes eggs have salmonella in them. So we want to be sure we're safe. Um, but Rocky drank raw eggs. Yeah, we're not Rocky. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Another alternative would be to get something called pre-pasteurized eggs and they're pasteurized in the shell and that's also a safe alternative to this. Right. Sound good? Sure. So this is getting a little bit thicker. It's not mm -hmm. splattering anymore. Um, so is this like what you would buy in a can that's spray can whipped cream? Kind of, but it's natural. So you don't have all the chemicals and or the gas. Cool whip. It's not cool whip. This is the real thing. So this is super easy. All we're going to do is make this whipping cream and add this chocolate mixture to it, and then we'll let it sit in the refrigerator for an hour, and it'll be ready to go. Sound good? Mm -hmm. I'm mesmerized by the I'm mesmerized <laughs> by the mixture. There are a couple of things one can just stare at for hours on end. Babies, campfires, and now I've learned. <laughs> All right. It's almost there. Mm -hmm. Do you mind if I take a look at the coddle? No, go ahead. Just a peek. Looks good? smells good. Alright, you can see the cream starting to thicken up. There we go. A quick note about this pot that you see here, the red pot that the coddle's in. Uh, when Christina first used this pot in an oven, the handle that was on the top of it cracked and broke and uh, was no longer usable so then she got this metal top or metal handle and you don't have to worry about it in the oven getting too hot or anything so we learned our lesson you can change the handles on these pots and make them oven safe <laughs> all right so the cream is nice and thick you can see and if you don't have one of these stand mixers at home that's totally okay you can use a hand mixer and it takes about five minutes instead of two or three but it works just as easily i'm going to turn this back on and put it on medium and I'm going to start spooning our chocolate mixture into there. Did you already say that somehow? Mm -hmm. Yep. 
and the chocolate mixture is pretty thick. It looks but it's like good. Brownie. Yeah, like a brownie. Kind of like fudgy. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna do about half of it, let it beat in. Starting to turn a little chocolatey. The other half. Got to get every last bit. It's a little known fact that I know how to play the violin. I started playing in fourth grade. And one thing that I've always wanted to do but never have been able to do is play like Irish reels and jigs and things. I've always enjoyed that kind of music. So maybe this St. Patrick's Day I'll commit to learning how to do that. That would be fun. You should come play it on Food You. Maybe next year. Maybe we'll post a video for you on our Facebook page. Maybe. <laughs> for all the recipes that we're making today and all of our recipes from previous episodes, feel free to check out Food You on Facebook and on YouTube. Yes. All right, that is ready. Oh, you know what? Mm -hmm. We forgot our magic ingredient. What? Bailey's. Bailey's caramel. The caramel. So we're gonna leave it on low. Actually, let's put it up a couple. And we're gonna add Don't about- Don't be shy. <laughs> we're only gonna add two tablespoons. Okay. Don't get too excited. Okay. One, two, there we go. And we're gonna turn that up and make sure it mixes well. And now that that's done, I'm gonna dish these up into glasses and get them in the fridge so they can set for about an hour now to when chill. You, when you say set, what do you mean? It's a little soupy right now, so we're gonna spoon it in the glasses and just let it set up kind of like you do pudding. Pudding? Pudding. Little oh, dang. <laughs> yes. Oh, dang. Right. So I'm gonna finish up this. And I'm gonna start chopping some cabbage and we'll make our last dish when we come back on Food You. Planning your next step in life? Come complete your education in a dynamic, caring environment at Wingate University. Enrollment and construction have skyrocketed in the past two decades as students pursue challenging and rewarding degrees in fields like the health sciences, business, and education. U.S. News & World Report has named Wingate University the sixth best value in the South. Visit one of our three great campuses, Wingate, North Carolina, Hendersonville, or Charlotte, or check us out at wingate.edu. Major in a great life at Wingate University. Welcome back. The last item on our St. Patrick's Day menu is sauteed cabbage. And Gabe's been working hard chopping up a head of cabbage over here. Yep, so I'm just finishing that up the last bit. It's cut in super thin strips, so when you're cutting a head of cabbage, it's helpful when you're cutting it to cut it in half. And yes, that way it's in half, you can lay it down flat, and then it's easier to chop. So that's it. So I'm getting my pan here to get ready to saute the cabbage. This is super easy. I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. Thank you. And we're just going to saute it with some butter. How much butter do you use? I'm using two tablespoons. <laughs> okay. So the cabbage that I've chopped is here, and we just did half a head, but you can do more. Um, cabbage cooks down really quickly, and so like spinach or any other green vegetable like this. Um, and that's gonna fill up the pan at first, but by the time we're done, it'll, it will have cooked down. And you're using what kind of heat? Medium high heat. Cool. I like sauteing things because when you do this, it's kind of over a high heat and it keeps them from getting soggy. And I'm not a big fan of soggy vegetables. So I'm excited to try this cabbage this way because cabbage, the way I've had it, it's always been boiled or like, I don't know, kind of mushy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
What are you doing? Just looking for something else. <laughs> Perfect. Sounds good. So when you're sauteing, the trick is just to keep it moving because you're using high <laughs> heat, and Gabe's doing a great job with that. I don't know why I'm holding the spatula now. <laughs> oh. mm, it smells good. It smells like butter. It does. <laughs> is cabbage healthy, or is it just like readily available? Um, I think it's healthy. It's a vegetable, isn't it? But I mean, is it like lettuce? Is it just mostly water? I don't know. I think it has more nutrients than lettuce. It's better, yeah. I would say it's, it's at worst, it's just neutral. We're but, gonna have to look that one up. But it's probably really good for you. Probably. <laughs> Didn't you tell me that celery is a negative calorie food, meaning that you burn calories by eating it? I did say that. That, I can't wrap my brain around that. It's true. It takes more calories to digest celery than it does. Then let's see, you expel expel? Uh, <laughs> you spend more calories. Expend more energy. Expend yes. more energy eating celery and digesting it than you do from the caloric value of it. Gotcha. Yeah. Pretty cool. But it also doesn't fill me up. I don't know about you. So what I have for you is a little bit of pepper and garlic salt to go on that cabbage. And, whoop, forgot to take the lid off. You can use regular salt if you want. I thought we would use some garlic salt and spice it up a little bit. Mm, Sound good? It's crazy. <laughs> I know. Do you want to pour it over? Mm -hmm. Thank you for mixing this up for me. You're welcome. See my technique? I'm just kind of shaking it. <laughs> Perfect. When we were growing up, my mama would make, sometimes for supper, cabbage and like this in a pan with sausage cut up. Mm -hmm. Put it in the oven, bake it, and that was always good. That sounds good. I think she put water in it, a little bit of water in it too, to keep it from all burning. That smells good. And that cabbage looks beautiful. So we're going to saute this for about 10 minutes until it starts to turn brown and it's nice and tender. And while that's doing that, we're going to take a short break and when we come back, we'll be ready to eat. Sound good? Your extraordinary future begins at Wingate University with more than 35 undergraduate majors and graduate and professional programs in the health sciences, business, and education. Wingate University's enrollment has mushroomed and construction has skyrocketed in the past two decades. And Wingate is the sixth best value in the South, according to U.S. News & World Report. Most importantly, Wingate graduates get jobs that are working all over the Carolinas and the U.S. Major in a great life at Wingate University. We're back, the cabbage is done, isn't it? Yeah, all done, and it's reduced in size by about half. So yeah. it's ready to eat. It looks good, it's still green, it smells good. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Our caudle is boiling still, it looks good, it smells good, the potatoes are tender, so that is ready to go. I'm gonna grab the mousse out of the fridge, and do you wanna turn these burners off for me? Mm -hmm. Thank you. And. We're gonna dish this up, and we'll be ready to eat in a second. How does that sound? Good. Okay. I'm gonna put my cabbage on the plate. Okay. So these are our Irish cream mousse, mousses, mousse, mousse dishes. They've been chilling for an hour, and they're nice and cold, and they look delicious. And I'm going to grab a spoon to serve that with. There we go. And mm, that looks good. So you see the layers of potatoes in here? And then we've got the sausage underneath there and the bacon and onions on the bottom. And it smells and looks delicious. 
It does smell good and it looks good. And I imagine if it were on some low heat for hours and hours that it would be even more kind of uh, the flavors and everything the, and the, even the potatoes and stuff would start to fall apart and it would be even more comforting. Like the more it coddles. The more it coddles. Yes. Awesome. That one's ready. We can make that other plate, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Some of this potatoes. Dig in here on the bottom for some of that bacon and sausage. There we go. Mm, it smells so good. There we go. One more. Perfect. There we have our St. Patrick's Day menu. So we have the Irish coddle, which was onions and thick cut bacon, pork sausage, potatoes, parsley, salt and pepper. We had the sauteed cabbage, which was cabbage, butter, uh, cabbage sauteed in butter, olive oil with some garlic, salt and pepper on it. Super easy to make. And then we have our Irish cream mousse, which was the egg yolks. Remember to check out those tempered egg yolks or else temper them yourself and the white sugar, cocoa powder, and the whipping cream mixed together and chilled for an hour. And that was super easy. Yeah, so uh, thank you for watching and thank you to the uh, Union County Ag Center and the North Car Carolina Cooperative Extension and their demonstration kitchen for letting us use this great facility. Yes, that's great. And remember to check us out on Wingate University's YouTube channel or check us out on Facebook under Food You for more recipes and tips. And we'll see you next time. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you.